you will never become rich if that's what you want to say. And that's okay. Yes, look what came, my June Glow Addicts box. Let's go see what's inside, yes. What is inside my Glow Addicts box? Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, you know I love me some good false eyelashes. <gasps> oh yes, a penny for your thoughts. Love this, love the box, everything. 3D Faux Mink False Lilashes. That's Medusa's makeup, ooh, look at this eyeshadow palette. Electro, what? <gasps> Look at this. Oh my God. Look at these great spring colors. Ooh, I am in love. <gasps> yes, 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 yes. Oh, a girl can never have too many makeup sponges. Right, right, right. Ooh, look at this. Firm and lift. The lower lift, six varieties, nine combinations. Brighten and tone, rejuvenating and firming, sebum and exfoliation. Exfoliation. Whoa, my God, this is gonna be great using this one tonight. And of course, we've got our great CBD coffee lip scrub. Ooh, ooh. and it smells like coffee, I'm sure. Yes, ooh, this is gonna be good. Mmm, mmm, ooh, it tastes good too. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to eat it. It's supposed to scrub, but it tastes good. Ooh, I cannot wait. If you guys haven't got your June Glow Addicts box, Reach out to them right now and get your box. Look at all the goodies that came inside of it. Yay, peeps. Guess what today is? Motivational Monday. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh my God. I love Motivational Mondays. I'm telling you. I know I say it all the time, but it's the honest to God truth. Honest to God truth. Oh, just, it's, it's almost like the other night there was a full moon. To me, full moons, represent almost the same thing as Mondays do. It's like, it's it's a fresh new start. It's a fresh new beginning. Wipe the slate clean, start fresh. Let's do it. Yes, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So guys, um, okay, so some of you guys are always asking me, so we're gonna talk about a couple different things here. Um, one is self-esteem and confidence. And some people are like, we don't understand, Teresa. We don't understand how come you're, how, how'd you get to be so confident? How, how did you build your self-esteem up? Don't you like this weird bun I got going on today? <laughs> it's kind of like poking up. Oh, well. Um, so, I know, I know for a fact, um, like in junior high and high school, and I know you can kind of relate, you know, when you're in PE class and um, I don't even know if they do PE classes anymore, do they? <laughs> okay, so back in my day, we used to do PE and it, when it was PE hour, you would go to the locker room where you had a locker, you would change into your PE clothes, um, you would do whatever you had to do for that hour, change back and go back to classes, right? Um, and I can remember back in junior high and high school, so many girls were like super modest and always had to go into the toilet area to change because they didn't want anybody to see their bodies and everything. And it was kind of weird because I was kind of like, I don't really care if you see my body because we're all girls. We all have the same body parts. Like some of us have different shapes, but why would we judge each other on how your body's different than my body, you know? so. From a young age, I was never modest. I didn't really care if other people saw my bodies because the way I looked at it was like, we all have the same thing. It's just a different size, right? Um, so I guess I was never really, I, I guess my self-esteem then wasn't bad. Um, my self-esteem got bad when I was in my, well, even growing up, I, I didn't know what my self-worth was because I had a mother that didn't treat us the best mentally, physically, and verbally. Um, but I, I didn't know much about self-worth at that point. When I was in my first marriage and, and got beat up a lot, that was when my self-esteem kind of went down the drains because I had someone telling me I was a piece of crap and 
and I deserve to be hit and kind of stuff like that. So it played mind games with me. So I remember when I came out of that divorce, um, I did a lot of counseling that helped me realize my self-worth and helped me build my self-esteem back up. Yes, I think sometimes you have to reach out for help. There's nothing wrong with reaching out for, with, for help. It's, just, it's, it's kind of like when someone reaches out to a personal trainer to lose weight, they're finally saying, I can't do this on my own, I need you to help me. Well, it was kind of the same thing because I had been beat down for quite a few years um, in that first marriage. I got a hold of a psychiatrist to help me understand, was it really my fault that I was getting beat up all the time? You know, because domestic violence, it, it plays mind games on you. And so anyways, um, through that, I, I learned more about self-esteem and that I was worth it. And uh, I, I guess from that point on, my confidence just grew and grew and grew. Um, now, am I more confident now than I was in my 20s and 30s? Oh, hell yes. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely, because I think the other thing that they always say with age comes wisdom, I truly believe that because if I could have been as confident in my late 20s and early 30s as I am now, um, I think I would even be farther ahead in life. <laughs> but um, confidence comes with when you're doing things in life and you're succeeding, that, that just builds up your confidence. You're just like, Wow, look at me. I mean, like, even when I was employed by other people and I would do a good job and then they would congratulate me on doing a good job, you know, that, that helps your confidence. You're like, oh, shoot, I'm, I'm pretty good at this, you know? Um, so I would say my self esteem and my confidence has only grown more in the years. Um, and I know there's a lot of kids out there that are in their, their teenage years, early 20s early 30s and they, they really suffer from low self-esteem and lacking of confidence and my only answer to that is to either get some self-help books and read them or hang out with people that that push you up and don't drag you down um, I've always said this if, if you are the smartest person in a room you need to get the hell out of that room and go into a room where you're the dumbest person because while you're in that room where you're the dumbest person you will be like a sponge. You will soak up so much valuable information um, and, and you can only learn and grow from being in a room full of smarter people than yourself. If you're in a room where you're the smartest person, that doesn't say much. Because then, I mean like what, I guess maybe you're just mentoring all those other people to try to become better people, I don't know. Which now kind of leads us into the second part of, of the video, which is all about you know, people are always asking me, how did you become wealthy? You know, what are what steps should I take to becoming wealthy? Basically, I didn't become wealthy until I went to work for myself. Because I found, and, and I didn't realize this then, like I do now, but I soon learned it as I started progressing more and more into life. When you work for someone, all you're doing is being paid for your time to work with them. So you're never gonna become a millionaire. You're never gonna become super, super, super wealthy as long as you work for someone else and you're just paid for your time. On the other hand, when you become self-employed or you get paid for your results, then you start to make money, big time money. So, the great, so here's where the difference is. When you work for someone else, you are getting paid for your time and you get a steady paycheck. And some people, that's all they want in life is to just have a steady paycheck. Just to know every two weeks they get paid this amount of money and they can make their house payment and their car payment and get their groceries and have a little fun money and so on and so forth. And they're happy with that. And, and those people are called worker bees. And, and we have to have a crap load of worker bees in this world for businesses to survive. Okay, we all have to have employees. I have an employee, I have Mr. Fabulous. But I feel that I pay him based on his results that he does for me, not his time. Does that make sense? He doesn't get paid an hourly wage. He gets paid weekly based on how he performs for me and what he does for me. And I think that's how most people should get paid. Is, is results based, not 
time-based. So when, when you're an employee, you're basically getting paid, th there's a ceiling, there's a, there's a cap, there's a ceiling. So when you're, when you're being paid for your time, there's a, a cap and you can only get so many raises, but you're limited, there's a ceiling, okay? When you get paid for your worth or your, what you're able to produce in results, the sky's the limit. You won't ever get rich working for someone else. And so I, I basically don't feel like I really started to become wealthy and so, and, until I became self-employed. So when I was able to start calling my own shots um, as a personal trainer and, and train as many people as I wanted to train in a day or in a week and a month, when I went on to save enough money to, to own my first health club and stuff, when I started becoming my own boss and, and working my own hours and being able to work as much as I wanted to work and make as much money as I wanted to make, that's when I started to get ahead in life. And from that day forward, I've never looked back. I've never worked for anybody else. Yes, I hang my, my real estate license at a real estate firm for a broker, um, but I'm a real estate agent. I work for myself. I don't work for her per se. I hang my license there so that I can flip houses and do what I want to do in real estate, but she doesn't really tell me what I can and cannot do. Like, like there's, she's not like got her thumb on me. Okay. so. Um, and then when it comes to Teresa Romer LLC and my brand and YouTube and everything else, I call the shots. If I want to work 100 hours in a week, I work 100 hours in a week. It, nobody tells me what I can and cannot do film-wise for my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel, the sky's the limit. I can make as much money as I want to make on YouTube. I can work as much as I want to work. I can basically, you know, and, and that's the freedom of YouTube um, or even Instagram you know, where I get my deals that I get with other companies where people want to collaborate with me and, and I become an affiliate for them um, and I make money being an affiliate. Um, so, you know, I guess the bottom line, guys, is, is until you become your own boss or you get paid for your self-worth or your, or your results that you give someone, you will never become rich, if that's what you want to say. And that's okay. Not, not everybody wants to be rich. But for those of you that have inquired, that are asking me, how do I get there? How do I be like you? I'm telling you, that's how you do it. You have to become your own boss or you at least have to get paid for the results that you get someone. Not your time, but the results that you get for someone. Like if you're a contract employee, you can get paid based on your results, not your time. When you're, when you're getting paid for your time, you're pretty much capped out at how much money you can ever make. So with that said, guys, I hope I gave you a little insight today. We talked about your self-esteem and confidence, which then we rolled it into being self-employed and, and how to make money and hopefully become rich. And so we're going to get more into this um, on Wednesday, but this is just a little eye opener. This is just a little insight. My point of view, you don't like it, don't listen to it. If you like it, then run with it. Um, so basically, that's my two cents worth. So until next time, guys, make sure you get out there, tell your friends about me. Um, make sure you get on my website still and purchase your pillow and your candle. You still get an autographed book for free. That's right, if you purchase a, book, a candle or if you put your, purchase a pillow, you can still receive an autographed book by me, Naked in 30 Days, which will help you on your wellness journey also which also helps you on your self-esteem and your confidence. So anyways, guys, we're going to put the link out so you can go take advantage of that amazing sale too. So subscribe, hit that notification bell, and until next time, bye-bye.